19 after 7 as we continue our outside broadcast on the road network and infrastructure which is inflicting more pain on motorists already dealing with skyrocketing fuel prices and pressure on disposable household income. And today we'll take a closer look at the state of the country's roads. Uh, my co-host Gareth Edwards is in Allen's Neck, Johannesburg in Rudaport and uh, he takes a closer look to that. Gareth, again we're sending you virtual warm hugs. It is bitterly cold, we can see um, and feel as well. But nonetheless, the motorists just navigating around those potholes which are clearly visible behind you. Yeah, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to what is a very cold Allen's Neck. It's the 5th of June. It's a Monday focus of ours on road infrastructure. Last week was water infrastructure. We were in Hammondskloll today uh, in Rudderport near Allen Glen High School. For those who might know the area or don't know the area, just around that corner at the bottom where the cars are vanishing off to is Allen Glen High School. There's two churches in this area. There are three nursery schools in this area, uh, swimming uh, lesson schools as well. So it is a very, very busy community. Community. And I've seen a lot of tweets coming through to at ENCA and at Gareth Edwards. SA, I see all the roads. Thank you very much. You can keep those coming through to me because we just found this one section of road. Because I live roundabout here. Yeah, I'm about 15 k's down the road. And I've always known how bad this issue is here. So we're currently, I'm trying to find the street name, Lundhuis. Lundhuis Street is where we are at the moment. We are going to be hearing from the Gauteng Department of Roads and Transport in a moment. But I want you to take a look at this as I just keep an eye out for trees traffic very quickly. I have counted in probably what is 80 meters. I've managed to count 79 potholes. Here's one car coming through. Just take a look how they have to navigate uh, through this. Luckily, that's a 4x4, four four, so that actually isn't too bad. But you must see some of the cars that are smaller with smaller wheels. But here's what I want you to take a look at very quickly. We were standing here earlier. Someone drove down towards the Allen Glen side. This cover that you can see here actually goes on this poor person's garden and inside here is their electricity box and that's the kind of damage that having to drive off the road to avoid these potholes is causing at the moment uh, so here's a taxi I'm going to keep heading up this way I'm going to see how this driver manages to navigate it as well morning 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 there we go all right so this is the section I'm talking about 80 odd meters 79 square uh, 79 potholes but just to give you a sense because i know the camera can't always pick it up as to how deep this is okay i've got size 10 feet okay my entire foot and then some ends up inside this pothole. i can actually stand in this pothole okay now imagine coming down this road sorry let me get out the way of the car imagine coming down this road at 40 50 60 k's an hour morning and having to hit this as well. It's like an extreme sport in South Africa at the moment. And this is why we're in this area. Yes, I know there are many other areas around Johannesburg, but this is a good example of just how bad this actually is. School transport coming through as well. All right, Lesiba Impia, you are the Gauteng Department of Roads and Transport spokesperson. You're joining us this morning. This is a complete disaster. What do you tell the residents of Allen's Neck? This has been like this for two years. Good morning. Good morning uh, to you and uh, good morning to the listeners. Well, yeah, it is not, it's a, it's a, it's a society indeed, um, but perhaps maybe just to give a, a, a bit of a context. There's about uh, 34,000, uh, the road no network in Houting is, is about 34,000 of, uh, of, uh, of road that um, uh, is shared between the province and the, the municipalities, including Sunrun. And uh, I can tell you uh, without a shadow of doubt that where you are, which is uh, basically <clears throat> in a residential area, it's more likely uh, to be an area that is been uh, uh, un that is under the um, responsibility and auspices of the city. But the MEC, the Ale Tabela, has um, where, you know um, very vehemently said that. Our people look at government for response and not, don't necessarily make a distinction of uh, which part of government is, is responsible for which part of road. So therefore, the response has got to be an overall wholesale government response. 
and hence she has spearheaded a process where... So how do we begin to do that, Lesiba? I don't think many people would argue with you. I don't think many people would argue with you. It needs to be a wholesale response Mm -hmm. by government. But I don't think most residents, and I'm just using Alan's neck as an example, I don't think most residents really Mm -hmm. care, whether it's a local councillor, whether it's municipality, whether it's provincial government or national government. This is just a small snapshot of what the entire country looks like. So who do you talk to to come and fix a situation like this? Because I don't want to get bogged down in the multiplicity of various government entities. The roads need to be fixed. Who does that in a residential area, for example? These residents are upset. They're shouting at me all morning. Yeah, well, if you are in the city of... If you are in Tuani, I suspect you are in Jobek. So the city of Jobek (coughs) is responsible for that piece of road. Look, we've done uh, interventions, including uh, launching of a portal uh, fix app, Uh, where residents uh, have a direct interaction with ourselves. We have a visual assessment in terms of, uh, you know, um, the the roads um, uh, on a a daily basis. Um, And that is why I was trying to explain the matter that uh, we've gone on a roadshow to have a MOU signed, because in terms of the the, uh, jurisdiction of, uh, uh, you know, uh, DORA, you can only be able to do work where uh, you know you are empowered by law. Where the where the where there is a, another authority, you have got to have a memorandum of understanding. We are happy to say that we have signed, except that uh, in the city of Tuani, uh, where we make interventions as a province. Uh, but I was trying to say that it, 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 we don't also want to bog down the residents into which part of government is responsible for which area. But we're trying to say that uh, our visual assessment... Correct, correct. And this, that- these, these various apps, and I'm sure many people understand, let's see what you're saying, that there are various interventions that you're doing. You say you're doing this, this road show, uh, and, and you're going out and looking at the areas. One of the complaints I've received from many residents here, Lesiba, is that whichever sphere of government it is, takes too long to respond. The residents are doing what you're asking them to do. They're being patient, they're using the proper channels, but it never gets done. This has been an issue since 20. 20- 2021 and this entire road for example uh, is in bad shape not just this section so what takes so long look we we have a, a maybe because i speak on behalf of the province i'm able to uh, give you a real time response uh, or, or re- a real uh, response time in terms of what the province is responsible for we are going to raise this matter with the city. Uh, like I said, we have a good respond- a relationship with the city of Jobek. We have signed the MOU and uh, will make it, uh, uh, you know, immediate intervention on that uh, piece of road, including others. But we, <clears throat> as I've said, that uh, in terms of the uh, responsibility, we are responsible only for provincial roads, except when we can make interventions where the city is unable for various reasons, including uh, budget. And how do you decide when to make that intervention? Because I think many people would agree with you, Lesiba, when you're quite right, you can make interventions if you need to in extreme circumstances. Who makes that decision when to intervene? When the city makes uh, when the city makes uh, an assertion that, uh, you know, there's uh, incapacity or, uh, you know, um, uh, where they are unable to, you know, sufficiently respond to the respond to the service delivery challenges, we as the province uh, come in. We don't impose ourselves, Kareth. It must be at the request of the city, because as we say, in terms of the Division of Revenue Act, there is a specific maintenance budget that are sent to provinces as well as the city. So we, we, I have indicated... Mm. Lesiba, let me ask you this. I understand about the budgets. I need to say goodbye to you in a moment, Lesiba. Let me ask you this. I understand budgets. Thank you. I want to ask this. One of the residents earlier saying that what they're now going to be doing in this part of Allen's Neck, and I'm sure this is the case for many other residents, they're getting money together as communities to fill up these potholes. JRA then comes out and says, no, no, you can't come out and fill in the potholes because it's illegal. You're going to get fined for that. But no one else is doing the job. So can residents fill up their own potholes yes or no no <clears throat> they, they they cannot and they should not because the responsibility rests with uh, the service delivery responsibility rests with uh, with government the the 
the spin the off but the spin problem is there's a lack of service delivery let's see but this is the point i'm getting at as well i understand I'm, I'm talking over you but there's no service delivery it's been two years so why can't residents do it you're not able to do it the city's not able to do it the residents are fed up why can't they fill it up you can't tell residents no if you're not providing services yeah we don't want to have a situation where we point fingers and you rightfully say that that is a jra issue and you should have taken it up with jra I'm trying to say that as province, we do make intervention where there is a request. We have not received a request as a result. Uh, we are open to assisting the city if at all there are constraints. And I think that, uh, uh, you know, um, the matters of this nature, as I've indicated, that it is a city that is responsible for that. And we should be able to take it up with that. But as a province, we are available to make interventions and, and assist. And I'm sure we're going to pick up on those interventions and hear from the city as well. But for the moment, Lesiba, thank you very much indeed. You can hear how complicated this really is. Lesiba and Pia, Gauteng Department of Roads and Transport spokesperson. One can't do uh, anything unless the other one asks them to, but the other one who's supposed to ask them to do something isn't asking for it. In the end, Cindy, as I come back to you, I don't think these residents care. This is what they're having to deal with. I do not get a sense that they care who is the person, who is the political party, what level of government has to get involved here, because in in the end, no one seems to be doing anything about it as well. I understand I'm only focusing on this road. I know it's the truth for many, many people watching around the country as well. But that's the kind of answers we're getting. I don't personally think it's good enough. I'm sure you don't either, Cindy, that all we're being told is this, uh, this uh, hand needs to talk to the other hand, and no one seems to get anything done. A lot of talking, not much pothole filling. Morning. That's what they're yeah. having. It's a very and, brave and, cycle. And you, uh, yeah. Not much uh, as being you're saying, done, Gareth, Yeah, as you're saying, Gareth, the last thing we want to hear is about the obsession government tends to have around red tape, bureaucracy, protocols, mm. who's supposed to be doing the work. You know, Lisiba was saying we shouldn't be getting involved in finger pointing, but bottom line is two, two years just to fall that stretch of road, as you were saying, is just way too long. You know, somebody needs to account for it. And I hope this broadcast will uh, definitely elev elevate and escalate the, the issues that we're trying to raise uh, for somebody to wake up and actually do their job. Yeah, absolutely, especially with our unemployment rate uh, in this country. Cindy, I'm going to come back to you and say goodbye with our unemployment rate in this country. There must be companies that we can get uh, uh, small artisans in, training road engineers, infrastructure experts. There are these expertise out there, but they're not uh, being called upon. And I think that's the biggest issue as well. It's like uh, watching another car going four by four in here. Cindy, let me come back to you uh, for the moment. Yeah. All right, Gareth, uh, thank you so much. You just saw there, it, it really is almost a, a national sport. You have to navigate around the potholes and you can share your stories of frustration as well in your area. Um, you know, we have a similar situation around uh, the four ways um, uh, suburb where potholes are just a nightmare, you know, and you have to go on the pavement and try and avoid other uh, cars as well uh, and make sure that yours is not damaged.